Can this be bad news for us? One of the most recognizable NASA spacecraft of the 20th century is experiencing some strange activity. With close to 50 years of continuous flight, Voyager 1 is a certified space saurer. But NASA is attempting to figure out why it is beaming back an odd message. Are these signals from extraterrestrial life? And how, up to this point, has the Voyager spacecraft been able to send radio messages? Let's find out. Erroneous number sequences such as rows of zeros are being transmitted by the computer signal that keeps Voyager 1's antenna pointing towards Earth. Members of the mission crew are attempting to understand what is going on with this distant probe, including project manager Suzanne Dodd, who started working on the Voyager 1 and 2 spacecraft over 38 years ago as her first job out of college in 1984. Currently, Voyager 1 is making its way across interstellar space. In 2012, it crossed the heliopause, the boundary of the solar wind sphere of influence in space. The spacecraft hasn't left the solar system, but it is still in the sun's gravitational pull. Yet scientists are hoping Voyager 1 will leave its lawn and travel even further into space as it skirts the border of our solar system. However, the further it travels, the older it becomes. It has recently been traveling through space at a rate of about 3.6 Earth-Sun distances each year and is presently a startling 14.5 billion miles away from Earth. On September 5, 1977, Voyager 1 launched, two weeks after its identical robotic twin, Voyager 2. They initially moved in the same path to meet the outer planets. But after swinging through Saturn in 1980 and 1981, they diverged onto independent trajectories. Is it aliens? The Attitude Articulation and Control System AACS computer on Voyager 1 appears to be the source of the issue. This computer, one of three on the spacecraft, manages Voyager 1's orientation, including managing its thrusters and maintaining the high-gain antenna pointed at Earth, so the information about the interstellar medium keeps returning. Voyager 1 is operating successfully, according to the team's ability to direct the spacecraft, the signal's intensity and the absence of fault protection activation. However, the telemetry signal does not make any sense on its own, yielding either all zeros or the number 377, according to Dodd. Dodd said, if the spacecraft was in dire straits, we would be seeing a degradation in our signal from our spacecraft, which they aren't seeing. Somewhere in the interface with the flight data system, there's something that's causing the telemetry data to be mixed up, I guess or nonsensical, and we don't understand that yet. What's next? According to Dodd, there would be two steps in the subsequent diagnosis of the issue. The first step is to look at what caused the abnormality in the first place. If they can accomplish that, we will be able to decide what to do next, whether to reset everything or switch to some of the backup gear, because these systems have redundancy 45 years later. However, that lengthy time frame is still working against them. According to Dodd, the individuals who conceptualized the circuitry and created the design for Voyager 1 are probably retired or have already passed away. There's a reasonable chance that we won't know what caused this anomaly. And in that case, we will move forward slowly, doing things to re-establish our normal operations. Or, she says, we might not ever be able to clear these telemetry issues. But after that, it's only a matter of adjusting to the new perplexing but safe world. If we don't know what the anomaly is, it just makes things more challenging, and you have to be more cautious in your future actions to ensure that you don't take any unnecessary risks that could endanger the spaceship, according to Dodd. One thing is certain, though, Voyager 1's activities are still ongoing, and it continues to transmit back scientific data every day. Certainly, the two Voyager spacecraft have a remarkable history. They were launched to take pictures of planets like Jupiter, Saturn and Neptune, 
but they have already continued past the solar system's boundaries. Voyager 1 is still broadcasting at a distance of nearly 7 billion miles or 11 billion kilometers, and it takes a signal from the spacecraft around 10 hours to reach Earth. The Voyager spacecraft has a 23-watt radio on board. Although this is more than the 3 watts that a normal cell phone uses, it is still a low-power transmitter overall. Tens of thousands of watts are what large radio stations on Earth use to transmit, although they still fade out quite quickly. The Voyager spacecraft has substantial antennae. Some people may have big satellite dish antennas in their yards, which you may have seen. These normally have a diameter of 2 to 3 meters, or 6 to 10 feet. The antenna on the Voyager spacecraft measures 3.7 meters, that's 14 feet in diameter, and broadcasts to an antenna on Earth that is approximately 34 meters, or 100 feet in height. The Earth antenna and the Voyager antenna are directly facing one another. You can notice the key factor that differs when you contrast your phone's tiny, stubby, omnidirectional antenna with a 34-meter directional antenna. There isn't much interference at this frequency, where the Voyager spacecraft are also transmitting in the 8 gigahertz bands. As a result, the Earth's antenna may use an incredibly sensitive amplifier while still understanding the weak signal it receives. Then, to ensure that the spacecraft receives the message, the Earth antenna sends it back to it using an extremely high strength, tens of thousands of watts. Coded communications are sent to prospective alien civilizations by Voyager 1 and 2. They have already provided scientists with a wealth of knowledge regarding the helio sheath, the solar system's outermost layer. But none of this was even intended for them. The Voyager spacecraft were designed to pass by the outer planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune and Uranus, and closely examine them for the first time in human history. The spacecraft was a complete success, making significant strides in planetary research. They only moved on to become the most extensive explorers of Earth after completing their initial mission. But the fact that the missions were even possible was due to extremely good fortune and timing. At the same time, the Voyager project almost failed before it even got off the ground due to a similar stroke of bad luck. These challenging missions, which were the result of recent developments in the science and mathematics of orbital paths, were almost abandoned in favor of the pricey space shuttle program. Today, Almost every unmanned space mission relies on the knowledge and expertise the Voyager spacecraft have accumulated. Despite having a lifetime mission cost of over $750 million, the Voyager spacecraft have returned enough scientific material by 1989 to fill 6,000 volumes of the Encyclopedia Britannica. The science modules on board were selected from submissions made by research teams from throughout the US. The knowledge we gained from the Voyager missions concerning Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune, as well as many of their moons, was extensive in both amount and influence. It affected public areas of the solar system, influenced science textbooks in schools across the US and established the framework for the current space program. Voyager is largely responsible for the knowledge we have of the outer planets, not to mention the countless pictures taken from viewpoints people had never previously encountered. The public's desire for further space exploration was stoked by those stunning photos of Jupiter and Saturn. From Voyager, we learned more about the weather on Jupiter, the rings around Jupiter, Saturn and Uranus, volcanic activity on Jupiter's moon Io, the masses and densities of Saturn's moons, the atmospheric pressure on Titan, Saturn's largest moon, the magnetic field of Uranus, and a persistent weather system on Neptune as large as Earth, known as the Great Dark Spot. Although some instruments on the Voyagers are no longer working, they do continue to send back important information. Imagine a car that's been on the road continuously since 1977, and you'll get some idea of how amazing these spacecraft are. 
While doing so, they will continue to travel at a speed of nearly 30,000 miles per hour, that's 48,280 kilometers per hour, for tens of thousands of years, arcing out toward the Milky Way. They won't corrode in space since there is no atmosphere and there isn't much of anything in interstellar space for them to collide with. Before they ever approach another star within a distance of a light year, it will take them around 40,000 years. It's possible that the voyagers could journey for millions or perhaps tens of thousands of years. What if the voyagers come across an advanced alien society in the future? We've left them a message. NASA believed it could be a good idea to include some sort of message to any intelligent aliens who might someday locate them after realizing that the voyagers would eventually journey outside of our solar system. These messages were created by a group under the direction of Carl Sagan, an astronomer. They are stored on copper discs that have been gold-plated and etched to resemble vinyl record albums. A portion of the disc is dedicated to audio content, which includes a selection of music, greetings in 55 different languages, some of which are extremely obscure or long extinct, and various natural sounds. The discs also contain 122 images that are encoded as vibrations on the discs along with decoding instructions. There are multiple symbols that represent the various record playing techniques on each disc's cover plate. A stylus and a mounting platter are included as well. The picture start signal, the aspect ratio of the images and a copy of the first image are described in the image decoding instructions allowing the aliens to check their work. The picture is completed with a star map that makes Earth's location very evident. The fragment of uranium-238 attached to the main bus next to the record can be examined by aliens if they are curious about how long the Voyager has been traveling. The length of time the sample has been in space could then be determined by analyzing the isotope ratios provided they are aware of the half-life of Uranium-238. When they play the album, what music will the aliens hear? Mostly traditional music from various countries, including African ritual music, Scottish bagpipes, Native American chants. Additionally, it functions as a sort of best hits compilation of classical music. The most recent tunes include Louis Armstrong's jazz composition and Chuck Berry's Johnny Be Good. Maps of Earth, photos of the other planets in our solar system, pictures of different animals, and even pictures of people are among the many different images on the record. Murmurs of Earth, a book written by Carl Sagan, is about the record. Many years later, a companion CD-ROM was also available. The Pioneer 10 and Pioneer 11 plaques are comparable to the Voyager discs, although the designers of the Voyager discs took extra care to ensure that aliens could decode them. The information on the Pioneer plaque was beyond the comprehension of many Earth scientists. If the Voyager disc is ever discovered, several people expressed worry that any hostile aliens would have a map that would take them right to Earth. The situation isn't particularly urgent though, as the Voyagers will spend tens of thousands of years in interstellar space before they are even close to another star. If the disks are ever discovered, they might be so distant in the future that people are extinct. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.